In this video, we will learn about the Carnot Nash equilibrium. What happens if the firms uh, form the cartel and what is the stability of cartel? The question is like this consider a Carnot duopoly model. We are being given the Carnot duopoly model like this. This is the industry demand that is P is equal to 140 minus Q1 plus Q2, where Q1 and Q2 are the outputs of firm 1 and firm 2, respectively. Also, the total cost for firm 1 is given by that is equal to 20 into Q1, and total cost for firm 2 is given by 20 Q2. Okay, we have to compute Carnot Nash equilibrium. Also, what happens if cartel is formed by the two firms in terms of output and profit? What happens to the output and profit? And we have to compare it with the Corno Nash equilibrium output. Okay. Also, we have to comment on the stability of cartel. Okay. Whether the cartel is the viable option for the firms uh, to do or not. Okay. Now let's try to uh, solve this question. Okay. Now I have made the video on Nash equilibrium. I will not go into the detail. What it is meant for okay so first we will calculate uh, that what you call Carnot Nash equilibrium okay how do we calculate the Carnot Nash equilibrium so let's take our industry demand that is equal to P is equal to 140 minus uh, Q1 plus Q2 okay that means this is our industry demand function uh, to get the Carnot Nash equilibrium first what we need to do we need to calculate the reaction function for firm 1 okay so I will write here reaction function for for firm 1 okay firm 1 okay but uh, what we mean by the reaction function it is simply uh, the optimal quantity firm 1 should produce uh, given the uh, given uh, firm 2 produces uh, Q2, okay, and what does it actually mean? It means best response for firm 1 in terms of output level produce decided by the firm 2 and I will uh, show you how to calculate this, okay. Now for firm 1, what is uh, total revenue, okay. So total revenue for firm 1, total revenue for firm 1 will be equal to price into quantity produced by firm 1 okay i'm just trying to calculate the reaction for, uh, function for firm 1 okay so what is price price is this very thing so i can write it like this let me write it like uh, we have 140 uh, minus uh, q1 minus q2 and to this we multiply q1 okay that means this comes out to be 140 q1 minus q1 square minus q1 q2 okay this is the total revenue for total revenue function for firm one okay what will be the marginal uh, revenue function marginal revenue function for firm one will be and we also assume here that the firms are identical okay so now uh, marginal revenue is simply the derivative of total revenue with respect to quantity one so that means d tr one upon dq one this comes out to be the derivative of q1 is 1 so we are left with 140 minus derivative of q1 square is 2 q1 minus derivative of q1 is 1 so we are left with q2 okay so this is what we call the marginal revenue for function uh, firm 1 and what is profit maximization condition i have told you n number of times profit maximization will require that our marginal revenue for firm 1 should be equal to the marginal cost of the firm 1 okay what is the marginal cost for firm 1 okay easily total cost is 20 q1 okay let me write it uh, here if total cost is equal to 20 q1 marginal cost for firm 1 will be the derivative of total cost function of firm 1 with respect to q1 okay so derivative of q1 is 1 so we are left with 20 that means marginal cost for firm 1 is 20 okay what is marginal revenue for firm 1 we have calculated it this is 140 minus twice q1 uh, minus q2 and to this we equate the marginal cost which we calculated it came out to be 20 okay now if we solve this very thing and here we can uh, do it uh, easily if we solve this very thing for q1 okay so if we transpose this to q1 here so this will become positive to q1 okay then we have uh, transposing this it will get subtracted akat sajji minus wu gai akat wu that comes out to be 120 okay minus q2 okay 
और आवर Q1 वन इज इक्वल टू वन ट्वेंटी माइनस क्यू टू डिवाइड बाई टू ओके दिस इज कॉल्ड द रिएक्शन फंक्शन एंड आई विल एक्सप्लेन यू हियर दिस इज द रिएक्शन फंक्शन फॉर फॉर्म वन ओके एंड वट डज इट टेल एस दिस रिएक्शन फंक्शन टेल्स आस द ऑप्टिमल क्वान्टिटी देट फर्म वन शुड प्रोड्यूस गिवन फर्म टू प्रोड्यूस लेट एस से क्यू टू हियर ओके देट मीन्स आउटपुट वी कैन ऑल्सो टेक इट दिस वे देट मॉर्नर रिव्यू ऑफ द फर्म वन डिपेंड्स अपॉन द फर्म टूज चॉइस ऑफ आउटपुट ओके देट मीन मॉर्नर रिव्यू डिपेंड्स अपॉन वट द फर्म टू विल डू विद इट इज आउटपुट ओके एंड ऑल्सो we can say this uh, is also called the best response function or best reply function uh, this very reaction function okay it says us optimal uh, quantity from one should uh, produce given from two produces let us say q2 here okay this is the reaction function for from one similarly since the you can calculate for from two also that means reaction function for from two okay it will come out to be i will not calculate it just to use these steps you will get uh, this the reaction function for form 2 also okay so that will come out to be q2 will be equal to 120 minus q2 upon q1 same thing here uh, that is optimal quantity uh, decided by form 2 should uh, this reaction function tells us that optimal quantity फर्म टू शुड प्रोड्यूस गिवन फर्म वन प्रोड्यूस क्यू वन सॉरी आई हैव नॉट रिटर्न इट करेक्टली हियर सो क्यू टू विल बी इट विल कम आउट टू बी क्यू वन अपॉन टू दैट मीन्स बेस्ट रेस्पॉन्स फॉर फर्म टू इन टर्म्स ऑफ आउटपुट लेवल डिसाइडेड बाई फर्म वन ओके सो दिस इज द रिएक्शन फंक्शन फॉर फर्म to okay i will not go into the details i have made a full video on cornot model okay so in this i am just trying to see the stability of cortel what happens uh, to the uh, uh, the cortel output or profit uh, and we will compare it with the cornot nash equilibrium output okay now we are done uh, with the two reaction form uh, reaction functions now we need to calculate the optimal quantities or the profit that they get okay for that we need to solve these two functions for these two functions for q1 and q2 okay now if we put let us say this is equation first this is equation second if we put q1 is equal to in second what will we get okay if we put q1 is equal to this thing here so we can write it like this uh, so q1 q1 will be equal to okay so we have 120 upon 120 upon 2 this comes out to be 60 i am just uh, solving this here then minus okay 1 upon 2 then we have q2 so in place of q2 we have this very function okay and this can also be written like this here q2 120 upon 2 is 60 okay uh, minus Q1 upon two. <coughs> Sorry, um. So let's do some calculation here. Okay. So I'm just trying to solve for Q1. Then I will rub this. So this comes out to be we have Q1 will be equal to 60 minus one half of 60. It comes out to be 30. Okay. Minus minus goes plus. We have. One half into one half comes out to be one four q one. Okay, if we transpose this term here, this will become q one minus q one upon four comes out to be sixty minus thirty comes out to be thirty, or four q one minus q one comes out to be three q one upon four comes out to be thirty, which implies q one will be equal to thirty. If we transpose three upon four, it will get reciprocated. Uh, In the RHS, so it comes out to be four upon three. Three ones are three tens are thirty. Ten fours are forty. Q one comes out to be forty. That means equilibrium uh, profit maximizing output level that from one should produce comes out to be Q one comes out to be Q one comes out to be forty. Okay.
so we got the optimal value of q1 so let me rub this out okay i will just solve this here and then i will rub this here okay similarly uh, if we got q1 is equal to 40 what will be q2 just plug q2 in this equation to get the optimal value since they are identical they will get 40 40 each but i will just try to uh, explain it here also now q2 will be equal to just plug q1 is equal to 40 in this equation so we have 120 minus in place of q1 we have 40 upon 2 so 120 minus 40 comes out to be 80 upon 2 which again comes out to be 40 that means uh, q2 will be also equal to 40 okay and what will be the uh, price what will be the price here so this is our uh, price will come out to be p is equal to 140 okay minus q1 plus q2 so we have 40 plus 40 this comes out to be uh, p will be equal to 140 minus uh, 80 uh, 140 minus 80 uh, 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 so this comes out to be 60 okay actually i uh, at times forget uh, the basic mathematics uh, arithmetical uh, arithmetics to say so okay so this is our Carnot nash equilibrium that means in a firm one should produce 40 firm two should produce 40 and price will be 60 okay now in this case uh, what we say this game is simultaneous and firms do not observe the actions create uh, selected by the opponent and i will explain it here also now this is our um, what you call the core not output now what will be the profit so profit for firm one is equal to total revenue that means price into quantity minus total cost that is 20 into so let me q1 q1 okay so profit for firm one will be equal to p into q1 so what was our p is 60 60 into 40 minus 20 into 40 okay and this comes out to be 1600 i guess uh this is 2400 okay so let me write it here this comes out to be 2400 minus uh, uh, two fours are 800 okay if we subtract uh, so we will be left with um, six and this is one so 1600 okay so i will write it here so we will get a pi one is equal to 1600 and profit for firm two will be also 1600 because they have same uh, total cost functions okay so you can calculate also p into q2 minus 20 into q2 i am just trying to save the space to go for the fur further analysis of this question okay sorry for that or you can do this uh, uh, easily i hope so for firm two it will be also 1600 okay so this was about the core knot uh what you call the core knot nash equilibrium q1 is 40 q2 is 40 price is 60 profit is 1600 1600 each okay now what happens uh if both the firms uh jointly produce the output level okay that means what happens uh in the cartel context okay now let us see what happens in the cartel so let me use another color here so let us see the cartel now in case of cartel what will be our demand function our q1 is equal to q2 will be equal to q or q1 plus q2 sorry so total output uh, will be equal to let us denoted by q that means our prof uh, this demand function will be 140 minus uh, q okay this is the inverse demand function in case of cartel when the two firms jointly produce something something not the output here okay obviously now <coughs> now what will be the uh, total revenue for this industry i am um, cartel uh, I'm telling that cartel is obviously the industry here okay so total revenue for the cartel okay will be equal to price into quantity obviously so this is p into q that is 140 
minus q to this we multiply q this comes out to be 140 q minus q square and what is marginal revenue for the quarter marginal revenue for the quarter is the derivative of total revenue obviously with respect to quantity that is dq what is derivative of q this is one we are left with 140 minus derivative of q2 q square is 2q obviously this is the marginal revenue in case of quarter okay now as we have seen here both firms have same marginal cost so in the quarter marginal cost so here marginal cost for firm one was equal to marginal cost for firm firm two will be equal to the marginal cost in case of quarter okay so same marginal cost what is the marginal cost so take any of this function and take derivative with respect to q okay so marginal cost here will also come out to be 20 in case of quarter marginal cost will be 20 okay i hope i am making myself clear since individual uh, firms have marginal cost 20 as i have shown you how to take the marginal cost then that means in case of portal the marginal cost will remain same okay now profit maximizing output means profit maximization requires as it always requires in case of duopoly so we will equate marginal oh, let me write it with marginal revenue with marginal cost okay so what is our marginal revenue marginal revenue that is 140 minus 2q should be equal to the marginal cost which is 20 solving for q implies uh, if we transpose this here so let me write it here so we have 22q is equal to if we transpose this here this comes here so this is 140 minus 20 that means 2q comes out to be 120 which means q is equal to 120 upon 2 which means uh, q is equal to 60 okay So that means Q will be equal to 60. What is Q? Q is the output uh, producer in case of quarter. Okay. So if Q is equal to 60, which implies this is the total output producer in uh, quarter, then what will be the share of uh, uh, firm one? So firm one's share will be equal to Q upon two that means 60 upon 2 obviously 30 similarly for firm 2 that he will also get 30 okay so if we dis if we divide this total output uh, in two in the, uh, in, in the two firms each firm will get 30 years the output okay i hope i am making myself clear here okay since this is the total industry output so total industry output uh, is 60 that means individual industries output will come out to be 30 and 30 30 30 go shared okay now what is the profit in this case and obviously this is the profit maximizing uh, profit maximizing output here now profit in case of quarter let me write here profit in case of quarter will be equal to price into quantity minus total cost okay total cost what is price uh, price in case of we have not calculated let me first uh, let me calculate the price first okay so what is price in case of quarter price will be equal to <coughs> Uh, we have 140 uh, minus quantity total quantity was 60 that means our price will come out to be 80 okay price in case of quarter will be 80 okay now what will be the profit profit in case of quarter will come out to be uh, will come out to be let us say total revenue that is price into quantity minus total cost okay total cost is uh, marginal cost total cost we can take any that is 20 into q in this in this case okay so p into q p into q what is p p is 80 uh, q is 60 so we have 80 into 60 minus 20 into 60 okay mm. what does it come out to be uh, 
4 minus 1 is 3, okay. So total profit uh, in case of cotton comes out to be 3600, okay. So let me write it here 3600, okay. And what will be the profit uh, for each firm, okay? Since there are only two firms, industry produces a profit of 3600. So profit for firm 1 will be equal to 3600 upon 2, which is 1800. And profit for industry, uh, sorry, firm 2 will also come out to be 1800. I hope I am making myself clear in this video. Okay, why? Because total, uh, total profit is this. Only two firms are here. So, profit this will be shared between these two firms. 1800 plus 1800 will come out to be 3600. Okay. <coughs> okay. Now, uh, let us uh, see uh, what happened, whether this... Uh, Mm, what we what we were uh, talking about since this was our Cornot Nash equilibrium in case of Cornot Nash equilibrium no firm has any incentive to take a unilateral decision and we can see it here by unilateral decision that means uh, output uh, that firm one will decide will depend upon the output level decided by the firm two okay so in case of Cornot Nash equilibrium no firm has i repeat any incentive to take a unilateral decision okay decision taken by firm one is obviously dependent upon what the firm two has taken it is decision okay and we say this is simultaneous this the gain is simultaneous okay and firms do not observe actions selected by the opponent we cannot uh, uh, observe the actions uh, selected by the opponent then uh, it is obviously uh, how to guess the competitor's output in this case as i told you each uh, each firm knows that everybody in this market uh, try to maximize profit or oh, and how they decide then their output each firm uses its own reaction uh, function to guess what the exponent will sorry what the opponent will decide okay i hope i am making myself clear so this is a simultaneous Mm, what you call the simultaneous uh, decisions are taken here okay Sil simultaneous move okay and this constitutes a Nash equilibrium no firm has any incentive to deviate from it is unilateral uh, in any uh, what you call the no firm has any incentive to take a unilateral decision because that will get affected in this case okay now coming to the cartel okay now we have seen here according to the Nash equilibrium pro uh, According to the according to the Nash equilibrium, profit is via sixteen hundred and sixteen hundred. Okay, obviously each firm gets sixteen hundred as profit. When forming cartel, each firm is getting eighteen hundred and eighteen hundred profits. Okay, we can see profits are more in case of cartel uh, compare uh, comparatively to the Carnot duopoly model. Okay, now can we say cartel uh, is the stable prediction? Can we say it is uh, obviously firms will choose to be uh, in the cartel because it is giving them more profit. That means paisa hi paisa hoga here, okay? I'm very sorry for my rude joke here. So, can we say uh, each firm is getting 1600, each firm is getting 1800. Can we say cartel is the sensible prediction, okay, that uh, firms will uh, stack uh, to the cartel? the answer is no why this cartel this cartel rather the cartel is intrinsically unstable intrinsically unstable what is meant by this both firms have an unilateral incentive to produce uh, the cartel agreement rather to produce above the cartel agreement what is the cartel agreement each firm should produce 30 30 but in case of cartel both firms have unilateral incentive i am just trying to make it more clear in case of nash equilibrium okay in case of nash equilibrium no let me write here unilateral unilateral incentive okay 
but in case of cotton, both firms have, or rather both firms have unilateral, unilateral incentive, okay? Incentive to produce above the above uh, the uh, cotton agreement okay now what is meant by this thing okay i will try to explain it in other words here we can say that cotton agreement do not constitute nash equilibrium and it is therefore uh, vulnerable uh, to unilateral deviations in case of cotton there can be the unilateral deviations but i will explain it in clear terms what is meant by this okay <coughs> sorry uh, I'm just trying to see if I have space here so that I can rub some uh, things here. Okay, so what can I rub here? I'm just trying to see whether this uh, this cotton will be the stable uh, uh, stable one. Okay, rather the stable outcome. So for that I have to rub something else here, but I'm not uh, able to see what I can rub here. Okay. So let me use this very space if I can use this very space to make it more uh, clear here. Now let us uh, see what happens. Let me rub this out here. I am very sorry if I am making much noise here because I am getting confused uh, what to rub here. Okay. <coughs> now this is the corner diopoly uh, output. This is the cotyl output okay so in case of core uh, each firm is producing 40 here producing only 30 price is 60 here price is 80 here profit is here 1600 1800 now why, why we will see the uh, stability of cartel okay now let us see what happens what happens uh, if firm 2 uh, credibly uh, commits to itself producing according to Cortal prescription okay and output level of 30 that means let us say a uh, firm to stickers to produce only the cartel output okay if firm to uh, stickers to produce uh, let us say firm to produces only 30 units okay of output he sticks to the agreement that means he is producing the output level decided in the cartel okay now what will be the profit maximizing choice of output of firm one in this case okay if firm one uh, stick is uh, to the cartel agreement and if firm one defect is okay then what will uh, the firm one produce firm one will produce according to his reaction function so reaction function for firm one is this since uh, uh, firm two is sticking uh, to 30 units okay he is fixing uh, the cartel output here so firm two sorry uh, firm one will produce that means q1 will be equal to 120 minus q2 that means 120 minus 30 this comes out to be 90 okay so this is 120 minus 30 upon 2 this comes out to be 90 upon 2 that means uh, firm one will produce 40 for you okay i'm just trying to uh, explain you here what happens if firm to okay commit is itself to produce according to the cartel prescription and output of 30 okay we have seen here now if it produces according to 30 and firm one does not agree to produce or uh, as the uh, according to the cartel agreement then firm one will use his reaction function to produce an output level of 45 as i have shown you put this um, firm to output level equal to let me write it here q2 q2 quarter is equal to 30 and q1 is uh, this uh, firm one will choose according to his reaction function okay as i have told you reaction function shows us uh, the best response for firm one in terms of output level decided by firm two since our firm two has decided to produce 30 so output decide uh, output that firm one will produce is 40 for you okay now firm one computers profit maximizing output utilizing its own reaction function obviously as i told you then 
<coughs> what is uh, the the profit maximizing output q1 is obtained from so what will be the profit for the q1 if we uh, um, what we call here this is the output produced by firm one this is the output pr produced by firm two when he sticks to the quarter agreement and what will be the price then the price will be equal to 140 okay minus q1 is in this case uh, 40 for you what is q2 q2 sorry q1 is 40 for you q2 is 30 okay which comes out to be it will come out to be 65 okay this will come out to be 65 and what will be the profit here so let me write it here now what will be the profit is when firm one breaks the quarter agreement so for firm one profit will be equal to price okay into q1 minus total cost is 20 q1 so this will come out to be what is price price is 65 okay uh, into what is q1 q1 is 45 uh, minus 20 q1 is 45 okay 45 so this will come out to be 2025 okay i have calculated uh, this very thing here what will be the profit for firm 2 firm 2's profit will be equal to price into quantity producer quantity he is producing is according to the quarter agreement minus 20 into q1 okay uh, q2 so this will also come out to be if i have the space here so what is price here price is 80 into 30 minus 20 into 30 okay so this is only 1350 okay i hope i make myself clear here so the reason why didn't i rub this out i want to make you sure what happens to the profit is when firm one breaks the quarter agreement okay and uh, to show that uh, this quarter uh, why this quarter agreement uh, why firms don't produce uh, according to the quarter is because if one firm defects or if one firm breaks the quarter profits will change drastically and here we can see if firm one breaks the quarter he gets the profit of 2500 and firm two will get only 1350 okay so obviously we can see firm one is better off but firm two is worse off here okay so <coughs> quarter uh, i repeat here uh, this quarter is intrinsically unstable here why because it cannot make both better off obviously one firm will be better off another one be worse off let me repeat it again here in case of corner noyes equilibrium each uh, firm was getting 1600 1600 as profit in case of profit uh, you know, quarter 1800 1800 both are getting okay now why i am saying that this is not the stable agreement sorry stable uh, um output uh, in case of quartal this is only because in case of quartal okay in case of quartal both firms have a unilateral incentive to produce above the quartal okay in other words quartal agreement do not constitute nosh equilibrium and it is therefore vulnerable to unilateral uh, deviations in case of quartal uh, firms can take unilateral deviations but in case of uh, Connaught model no firm has any incentive to take a unilateral decision uh, uh, unilateral deviation or decision here okay <coughs> now let me uh, try to explain uh, this very thing uh, according to the game theory okay now let us see whether there is Nash equilibrium in this case just to cross check this 1600 1600 is the Nash equilibrium for this game okay now let us see if firm one decides to produce according to reaction function okay if firm one chooses this strategy 
ओके फर्म टू हेज टू ऑप्शन आइदर टू चूज रिएक्शन फंक्शन और टू चूज काटल रिएक्शन फंक्शन गिवज हम सिक्सटीन हंड्रेड काटल गिवज हम थर्टीन हंड्रेड फिफ्टी सो ही विल चूज दिस वेरी स्ट्रेटी ओके अगेन लेट अस सी ये फर्म फर्म वन चूज काटल ओके ये फर्म वन चूज टू प्रोड्यूस अकॉर्डिंग टू काटल फर्म टू हेज अगेन टू ऑप्शन आइदर टू गो फॉर रिएक्शन फंक्शन और टू काटल एंड हियर वी कैन सी रिएक्शन फंक्शन गिवज हम टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी फाइव काटल ऑनली गिवज हम एटीन हंड्रेड सो ही विल स्टिक हियर ओके दिस वॉज अकॉर्डिंग टू द फर्म वन चॉइस नाउ लेट अस सी वट हैपन्स ए फर्म टू चूज to produce according to reaction function if firm 2 chooses to produce according to reaction function firm 1 has two options either to produce according to reaction function or according to cotl producing according to reaction function gives him 1600 uh, producing according to cotl will give him only 1350 so obviously he will choose the higher profit here okay now let us see if firm 2 chooses to produce according to the cotl okay if firm 2 chooses to produce according to the cotl again firm 1 has two options or either to go according to reaction function or according to cotl cotl gives him 1800 reaction function gives him uh, 2025 okay obviously 2025 will be greater than this so firm 1 will try to choose this very thing here okay now we have the nash equilibrium what was the definition uh, rather why, where does the nash equilibrium occur when both the terms are encircled okay so since here both the numbers are encircled we say that 1600 1600 is the nash equilibrium for this game okay and also let us say uh, what happens in this case Uh, whether this 1800 1800 is the nash equilibrium actually we didn't get the nash equilibrium why this 1800 and 1800 is not the nash equilibrium why it is simply because in this case in this case both the players have incentive to deviate unilaterally okay so let me write here so both the firms as i have shown you here if firm one breaks what happens to the profit is here if one firm breaks uh, the cotl another firm is worse off if firm two breaks firm one is worse off so they cannot this cannot be the stable i will not write, write here this cannot be the stable um, outcome of this game the only outcome stable outcome in this game will be this reaction function producing according to the reaction function that means producing according to the carnot model okay <coughs> let me repeat here why this 1800 and 1800 is not the viable case i have shown you here what happens <coughs> if any one player deviates that means any one player defects here any one player refuses to uh, produce according to cotl if one player refuses to produce according to the cotl okay so firm uh, let us say firm one refuses to produce uh, refuses to, uh, refuses to produce according to the cotl firm one will get better off but firm 2 will get worse off so this is an unstable equilibrium okay this can this is an unstable outcome although it is uh, pareto optimum this is pareto inefficient nash equilibrium has three properties uniqueness is not there okay we have multiple nash equilibrium no this is not also we uh, uh, sorry uniqueness uh, is not there also uh, nash equilibrium was pareto inefficient i have to show you in the game theory so i will also put a link there so this 1800 1800 is not the stable outcome only stable outcome will be 1600 1600 that is when both the firms decide to produce according to the reaction function why this is not stable i have shown you here if one firm deviates so practice will change okay so in case of the cotl let me repeat it here again i am just repeating and repeating i am sorry for that in case of cotl both players have an incentive to deviate unilaterally okay but in case of in case of nash equilibrium no firm has any incentive to deviate unilaterally okay i hope i make myself clear in this video thank you